Hello, welcome to New Queers TV. We're going to be looking back at a Marlborough Productions project called New Queers on the Block, which toured around the country in the last two years, and we've spent the last three years creating this work with a bunch of amazing artists who are queer, black and brown, they are disabled, and they are coming to your town. For the inaugural, or first, New Queers on the Block tour, we decided to take the Marvel's favourite artists on the road together. What we are doing tonight, my dears, is we're not seeking to define queerness, but we are attempting some descriptions of the multiplicities of expression within it. From where we started with this project and where we are now, having finished the first tour, looking ahead to the second one, the main thing that's changed is just our aims and our attitudes to what we're doing as a project. It's not about us bringing the queer culture, it's about engaging with the fantastic people there doing their thing. It's about using the platform that the tour has to highlight to other artists across the UK and theatre makers and audiences that these different places that we've been to are really exciting places to go if you want to find and experience different queer cultures. Just some of those interactions with people who were like, wow, like this is really great to see. It made me kind of feel a bit like, like oh, that's really important actually, for people to see this collectiveness, us as a collective. I was really pleased to see these artists come to Blackpool because we're sort of well known for cabaret and variety but it's very sort of traditional and it's nice to sort of test people's boundaries and to challenge people in some ways. I think it's the first time I've ever seen anything like this on this scale and I'm just blown away about like how good it was. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. As an audience member, I think it's probably a really nice thing for them to watch. It's quite, it kind of takes them to different places and asks them to think of different things. And it's been really well received, yeah. So, that's how we did in the first year. Let's see how we did in the second. For 2019, we slightly revised our approach to New Queers on the Block. Uh, we'd learned from year one that we wanted to be more embedded in the communities uh, that we were working. We discovered some amazing LGBTQ plus people across the country and we wanted to find out what uh, would resonate with our audiences and what would make the artists we were working with feel more connected to these places. One of the best things and most exciting parts of New Queers on the Block was the artist development work that we did. We worked with LGBTQ plus artists at all career stages. We commissioned work from people that we were really excited about. So we commissioned Marika's Cry 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 to make their first group piece, He's Dead. We worked with Unlimited to commission Oozing Gloop, the UK's premier green autistic drag queen, to make a new piece, Glooptopia, that was by far the most ambitious and large-scale thing that they'd ever done. Glooptopia is the idea of a new language of utopia. It is thrilling and high energy and fast talking to produce some sort of sense of like political hope. We are working with a British Sign Language interpreter as part of the making process and we're also thinking as well about how to make this show accessible for other neurodiverse and cognitively disabled people like myself. We also work with local artists in each of our partner locations and we guided them through a development process and helped them, in most cases, access some of the first funding that they received. The local ambassadors were at the heart of New Queers on the Block uh, throughout the project and in year two we worked with them to present workshops uh, in each of the locations. We got them to create local platforms for LGBTQ artists like live literature events, scratch nights, work in progress sharings, um, all as a way of kind of encouraging the creativity of LGBTQ plus people in the places that we were working. Of course, we still toured shows during this period and we were really excited to present work from Harry Josephine Giles, Demi Nahandra, Harry Clayton Wright, hopefully helping them find new audiences in locations across the UK. I've never had an experience like that or been on a tour with a group of artists whose work are all quite different but powerfully pushing 
both formal and like identitarian and aesthetic boundaries in a way that's like productive and fruitful and interesting for audiences. Uh, so it's been really good. It's been refreshing to actually have more of that in Hastings. The artists were great. I've never seen anything alternative like that before. Right? All of those artists were high level, right? I mean, they were unbelievable. And actually really great to see someone local in there as well. It's such a good opportunity to see something so diverse in one of these coastal towns. So that was it for 2019. I've been exhausted thinking about it. And now we're going to look ahead to the final year of Nucleus on the Block 2020. So for the final phase of New Quiz in the Block, we wanted to bring everyone together. All the artists, all the audiences, all the local ambassadors, all our venue partners and all our friends into this one big giant melting pot. And together we collaborated to create these unique weekenders which provided uh, kind of unique experiences in each town. Each location had its own programming, its own artists, its own activities, all programmed and curated in collaboration with everyone. We had premieres of Gloobtopia by uh, Losing Gloob. We had a premiere of He's Dead. We had a premiere of Join Duco. We had artists that we had never collaborated with before coming into the forehand. Uh, we had our local ambassadors programming into the venues as well, which brought such a variety of audiences and faces and, and backgrounds and identities and worldviews, all in this kind of celebratory mood. Perhaps the biggest achievement of this project was to really embed ourselves in the places that we were working in. We felt like our weekenders were a unique way of our audiences experiencing the breadth of quality of the programme and different ways that they can interact with uh, different identities and cultural backgrounds and artistic practices. There's a lot of things that aren't spoken about around here, like yeah. Bucklesland is like a gay culture, but like there is a lot of this sort of thing here and it's so refreshing. I think it was really important to see a show that is billed as New Quiz on the Block doesn't actually mention race and racism or anything like that, but has the majority of performers, actually at most of the shows that we were the majority, putting on a show about queerness. The kind of concepts, the way we think about queer is very whitewashed a lot of the time. So I think it's really important that people could come and then be confronted with loads of people of colour doing amazing stuff. The New Queers on the Block, we spent three years going to lots of different venues and locations around the country and really growing an audience from something very small to actually having regulars who would come back each time for more art. And a lot of the people had their first experience of performance art at New Queers, which was super exciting to be part of. We learnt quite a lot over the three years, particularly around artist development, being able to take their work from quite early stages and bring it into much larger venues than they necessarily would have had an opportunity opportunity to perform in, which also gave them a really big sense of how their work might need to change in different settings, which is completely valuable uh, for them as a performer. And then also the other side of that is the community development, uh, where because we were going back to the same locations each time, audiences were able to get a feel for different types of work and how they might learn from it and engage with it, and also just get to know each other and to meet the artists afterwards in the foyer or whatever. Um, it meant that people could really like form relationships with each other, which I think is just great for those local areas as well. So looking to the future, we're really excited about what the next few years might hold for this project. Um, we've done so much really amazing work in these locations already that the opportunity to take this work back out to them, um, particularly with a focus on artist development um, in the next phase, which I think is going to be really crucial to the longevity of the project. But also in you know bringing art out to more and more people, we've got so many really nice things that we've that we've learned from already that we can just really bring into the future um, and make the world a little bit brighter. In addition to that we're also going to be bringing the audience into the programming process more so that local areas have a say in the kind of work that they do and it also gives each area um, like a bit of ownership and a bit of their own personality into the work which is just such a wonderful thing to be part of. So that was the first three years of New Queers on the Block and we're really excited to find out what you might be interested in bringing to the next three years.